I, and I appreciate you. You know, I know what your angle is, and you're trying to lift yourself up as like an authority on this, and I appreciate that. But you know, if you're going to take the same tactic and strategy as the liberal press that they totally ignored for the sake of clickbait when reporters would tell us that they specifically were not going to include other people that were harmed because they wanted to focus on the Fox guy just to drive traffic. And we've had conservative reporters reach out to us and just say how laughable it's been. And, you know, it, it's it's just it's just a damn shame. I mean, it, you know, it really is. Um, you know, I, I, I appreciate you reaching out about it, but... You have to also appreciate when you're involved in litigation, as ridiculous as the litigation is, you can't talk about these things. You know, you can't, I can't go into specific about any case. Um, you know, I, you just can't. Um, as much as I'd like to, I just don't, you know. I've, I've done that with, You know, I don't know if you've ever been sued before. I hope you haven't. Um, but if you're in business, that's bound to happen, you know? I would imagine this is a rather difficult story to tell. Why come on and, and, and tell your story to the general public? Um, it is hard to tell. It's um, been very stressful and it's embarrassing. I mean, I'm an educated person, and I took my time um, taking this step to, to do this, and to have it turn out this way is humiliating. It's embarrassing. Uh, I came on the show so that other people hopefully um, will be able to see this video um, and be able to be forewarned. If I can help somebody else, I know I won't get my money back if somebody else. What made you believe? that you would be dealing with Clayton Morris's company the entire time. Like what made you assume uh, or go into this, you know, spend your money with the knowledge, with the thought process in your head that you would be dealing with them during the sale as well as after the sale. Why did you feel that way? Um, from listening to his podcast for a year and the information on his website, he's, he said repeatedly, done for you real estate and so i thought this would be a good way to do my first property to kind of get an idea of the things that transpired during a real estate transaction and, and setting up to um, invest in a real estate property but it is repeated innumerable times on his podcast as well as listed on his website how did you hear about morris invest and how did you end up investing your money with clayton morris's company so I was familiar with Clayton from Fox and Friends. And uh, one weekend morning, I turned on the TV just to catch the last two minutes of the program where he was, it was his last show. And, but I didn't hear anything about where he was going or what he was doing. So that prompted me, my curiosity, to get online and kind of try to find out. And um, through my search, I found out about his real estate company and, and Morris Invest. And uh, it piqued my interest because for many years I've been interested in real estate investing. Uh, I had started to look into it in my early 20s and life got in the way and I just never went down that road. And so um, then I you know, found his podcast through that search and started listening and started learning more about it and um, listened to those podcasts for about a year before I, um, well, earlier on than that, I made a phone call to Mars Invest to find out what his program was about. And um, meanwhile, kind of worked towards getting uh, a HELOC so that I could move forward with investing. How much money did you end up investing with Clayton's company? Just about $120,000. And how was your experience with investing? How did things turn out with that $120,000 investment? So uh, in July of 2018, we purchased our first property that was um, I think about $57,000. This was located in Detroit. 
it was um, advertised as a tenanted um, rehabbed property. And then a couple of weeks later, as that was finishing going through the process, we decided where we would go ahead and purchase our second property. And um, so then our second one was in the same area, in the Detroit metro area. And that one was, um, I think it was 60, 62,000, 65,000. And that property was also advertised as a completed rehab, tenanted property. And after closing, I found out that that wasn't true. It had not even been rehabbed, let alone had a tenant. And I showed them the listing that they had sent me that said that information, that it was tenanted. And they said they didn't know how that got on there, but that it was not tenanted. And it was not rehabbed yet. I, I figured it would be about 90 days. That's what they say on, on the podcast. That's what they told me when we found out this hadn't been renewed. So um, getting closer to that 90, or maybe about the 60 day, I you know, emailed Morris and said, I wanted to check in to see how this is going. And they sent some pictures at some point. Um, 90 days came and went and I asked about the property again. Uh, this was, they said that the rental had been completed. They were just waiting on replacement windows. So no tenant was placed yet. Now we're getting, you know, into November, December. And so every couple of weeks I would email and ask, you know, how, how is this coming along? How is it progressing? I'm still waiting on the windows. And, and it always was curious to me of why we were waiting on windows months down the road when the rental supposedly started in July. You know, why is it six months to get windows? Um, and so in this kept recurring. And then finally in March, I, we received a call from the property management company, which actually changed hands uh, in October. Someone bought out the original property management company. Um, this property management company called us, um, I think it was March 3rd, to tell us there had been a fire at the property. And um, they didn't know the damage, they didn't have, you didn't really have any information to give us other than that. So we really had to get on the phone and try to get people to give us information, get pictures for us, and try to let us know what happened there. And because the home had been sitting empty since January with a hole in the roof from the fire, there was um, significant damage to the inside of the home. There was a total loss. Well, I would, ass I would assume the home was probably empty since July the year before, no? Correct, correct, but at least it had a roof on it. <laughs> okay, so we don't think that the roof, uh, the roof uh, damage occurred till January, probably in a storm or something of that nature? Uh, in the fire. So the fire was not in March? No, it ha actually occurred in January. Once we were, it took us uh, about six weeks to actually obtain the fire report. And that's when we found out it was in January. To clarify, they didn't tell you about the fire till at least 60 days after it occurred? Yes. Uh, the fire occurred January 11th, and we weren't notified until the first week of March. As of today, as I'm talking to you, how much of your initial investment with Morris Invest have you lost? A good $60,000. The second home is currently vacant. I'm having to pay um, fees to store the HVAC and the water heater so that it doesn't get stolen and pay for property upkeep. I'm trying to sell the home to a wholesaler, but there's been problems on the title on the, the second home. Um, I've been for over two months trying to work out the issues with the title. Having to store your HVAC and your hot water tank and things of that nature because the risk of theft is so great would indicate to me as, as a longtime real estate investor 
that that means the particular property you had purchased from Morris Invest is in a very high risk neighborhood, you know, the ghetto, so to speak. Was that presented to you? Was the risk of the neighborhood presented to you when they were trying to sell you this home? Not at all. And from listening to the podcast and um, in other places, uh, Clayton frequently talked about um, the homes that costing about $30,000. And so since my homes um, were more than that, especially the one that had not been rehabbed yet, uh, I, I thought that, you know, that might be a little bit better area than what he might typically build in or rehab in. What type of tenant base was he explaining to you that you get? Because there's even been shows out there where Clayton had mentioned that perhaps doctors or nurses like to live in some of their properties. You being in the medical field yourself, would this be the type of neighborhood you would ever consider living in? Yes, I've heard him say that, and I've thought about that many times. And, and this is not a neighborhood that you would um, find the working professionals, I think he maybe called it, including hospital employees, nurses, et cetera. Knowing what you know today, would you ever consider investing with Morris Invest or Clayton Morris again? No. I would um, caution anyone who's even remotely considering it. Uh, at the time, I wasn't aware of how active he is in keeping his online reputation stellar. I, before I invested, I tried to vet it out and see if there were any problems. And at the time, I could only find one video, and so I thought, well, there's, you know, there's always one, one person in the crowd that you can't make happy no matter what you do. So I, I dismissed that, um, that one that I could find and I looked very hard to try to find any any kind of comments, any kind of videos, any kind of um, reports. And at that point when I was, you know, making the decision to invest, there, there wasn't anything out there. And even now with the stories coming out about him, it's still difficult to find information. You know, if, if you're somebody who like I was at that point trying to look and find that it's it's getting more, but um, he's very active in trying to keep his online reputation stellar. How did you feel when you found out that Clayton Morris had fled the United States after all the lawsuits came out and he actually left and went to Portugal? Uh, I was very angry um, and that cemented in my mind that he was aware of the problems. I would think that somebody who was forthright would want to take care of the is issues as they arose and Leaving the country was just cowardly, and um, it's, it makes you very angry. I, I really don't know what to say. If, if you had the opportunity, if Clayton Morris was sitting in front of you right now, and you had the opportunity to ask him anything you wanted, what would you say to Clayton Morris? I'm not sure. I haven't thought about that, but I think I would ask him um, why he won't make things right. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.